Hi students, this is Suresh, faculty of chemistry from Infinity Learn. Today we are going to discuss about crystal field theory is very important topic for neat examination from coordination complexes topic. In this particular crystal field theory, definitely you will be getting one question from the neat examination. Let us see this crystal field theory or otherwise you say SCFT is all about the nature of bonding between a ligand and the central atom. So, VBT and crystal field theory. In the VBT, the bond between the central atom and the ligand is said to be purely covalent. Whereas, according to crystal field theory, the bond between the central atom and the ligand is going to be purely ionic. According to CFT, it says the central metal atom and the ionic ligand or it is said to be a point dipole there is an ionic interaction between the central metal atom and the ligand and based on that what is the involvement of the d orbitals you can see there are five d orbitals you can see in this five d orbitals dxy dyz dx square y square and dzx and dz square in these orbitals you can say when these 5d orbitals are degenerate when the ligand is coming and approaching the degeneracy of the d orbitals are lost and you are going to have dxy yz and zx orbitals are said to be non-axial orbitals whereas x square and y square and z square orbitals are said to be axial orbitals in in this axial orbitals when these d orbitals the ligand is coming and they are going to lose the degeneracy and comes to be set of low energy orbitals that said to be t2g orbitals and set of high energy orbitals are said to be eg orbitals and the distribution of these degeneracy lossing in presence of a ligand is said to be crystal field splitting that's what i just want to say dx square and y square dz square orbitals they are present along the axis axial orbitals and dxy and yz and the zx orbitals the lobes are present between the orbitals so when you say these are the axis and between the axis whenever a ligand is coming and approaching in this direction if the lobe is present on this axis they experience less repulsion if the lobe is present on this axis they experience more repulsion more repulsion it is going to be more energetic less repulsion is going to be less energetic that's the reason why you can see the 5d orbitals of the central metal atom dxy yz zx x square y square and z square they are going to be degenerate in presence of any ligand or any ion in the presence of a ligand they are going to split into two set of orbitals set of lower energy orbitals they are xy yz and zx is going to be t2g orbitals set of higher energy orbitals are said to be x square and y square they are said to be ez orbitals and this splitting of the d orbitals in presence of ligand is called as crystal field splitting and the energy gap between these two is said to be octahedral crystal field splitting energy and when you see this is actual energy of the barrier that is called barycenter and t2g orbitals is going to decrease the energy for minus 0.4 dq and t2g and eg you can see and you are going to see there is an energy of minus 0.4 octahedral crystal field splitting energy that is you can measure like this and it is going to increase 0.6 octahedral crystal field splitting energy and uh, this is what you call is a total octahedral crystal field splitting energy now electrons are going to be enter in this crystal field splitting energy orbitals t2g and eg orbitals similarly crystal field splitting energy for the tetrahedral complex 3 was down and 2 was up and the reverse happens in the case of tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy because in the tetrahedral uh, polyhedron the 
orbit ligand is going to approach in such a way that the reverse splitting takes place and in this reverse splitting x square y square and z square d orbital experiences uh, less repulsion and more stability and it is going to be minus uh, 0 0.6 and it is going to be 0 point plus 0 0.4 they are dx y and yz and zx orbitals and this is what is said to be octahedral crystal field splitting energy that previous one and this is what you say tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy. So, the relation between the octahedral and tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy always tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy is 4 by 9 times of the octahedral crystal field splitting energy that is a noteworthy point and these are the simplest point you need to know about the crystal field splitting from the NCRT textbook and let us see how to apply this. And when the ligand are arranged in order of magnitude of the crystal field splitting energy, when the orbital is coming, the ligand is approaching and there is a splitting of the orbitals. This magnitude is called as crystal field splitting energy. The crystal field splitting energy depends on the strength of the ligand. If it is a weak ligand, it is going to be this much. If it is a strong ligand, this is going to be this much. And that is explained on the basis of spectrochemical series. And in the spectrochemical series, the order of the ligands you can see, I minus Br minus SCN minus Cl minus it goes like that and it ends with CO. And these are all strong ligands. And these are all the weak ligands, these are all the weak ligands. And you can see in this weak ligand and the strong ligand, students is difficult to memorize this order. But I can see, give you a simple trick to memorize the crystal field splitting A is going to be C donor is a strong ligand as compared to N donor is strong as compared to oxygen donor is strong as compared to halogen. So, this is a super trick to understand and memorize the order of the crystal field splitting spectrochemical series. And you can see halogen is less than oxygen is less than, nitrogen is less than, carbon is less than. So, I mean to say strength of the ligand inversely proportional to electronegativity. So, the more the electronegativity of the donor atom of the ligand, so it is going to be the weaker is the ligand. That is a simple awesome trick that you can see from the NCRT also. And also you can see distribution of electrons in octahedral crystal field splitting and electronic configuration. And I just want to give you this is the crystal field splitting energy in the presence of a weak ligand it is going to be like this octahedral in the presence of a strong it is a weak ligand it is a weak ligand in the presence of a strong ligand these 5d orbitals appears like this and there is a huge energy gap between these two T2G and these orbitals are said to be EG and these are T2G and EG. When you fill the electrons, when you fill the electrons with the orbitals, first electron, second electron, third electron and as energy gap is very less, fourth electron will come here fifth electron, then pairing takes place, sixth electron, seventh electron, eighth electron, ninth electron and tenth electron. So, this is the electron configuration order you have to follow just Hun's rule. Whereas, in the presence of a strong field ligand, there is a huge gap. As there is a huge gap, T2G electrons are filled like first electron, second electron, third electron. Then pay, do not go to the EG orbitals, then you pair up here because there is a huge gap 
you cannot follow Hund's rule and here it is going to fourth and the fifth and the sixth and coming to seventh and the eighth and ninth and the tenth so like that you have to check the electronic configuration here in the presence of weak ligand t2g1 t2g2 t2g4 and it is a low spin d4 configuration d4 configuration t2g3 and a eg1 and d5 configuration t2g5 and with low spin t2g4 and eg2 is the high spin like that depending upon the spin depending upon the strength of ligand it decides whether we have to follow Holmes rule or not and this is a super awesome trick that you can see to write the electronic configuration in presence of a weak ligand in presence of a strong ligand that is a simple application that you can go with crystal field splitting theory and you can see what are the applications of CFT you can check the magnetic nature of the complex <laughs> magnetic nature of the complex can be explained on the basis of mu is equal to root over n into n plus 2 Bohr magneton and where n stands for the number of unpaired electrons in the crystal field splitting energy orbitalic electronic configuration when n is equal to 0 it is diamagnetic n is not equal to 0 it is said to be paramagnetic and the magnitude of the Magnetic movement can also be calculated by using this formula dear students and these high spin complexes like uh, hexa aqua iron 2 has a uh, four unpaired electrons and it is a paramagnetic while you can see low spin complex like C N 6 4 minus no unpaired electrons it's said to be diamagnetic my dear students water is said to be a weak ligand according to crystal field splitting theory and the color the color means when the crystal field splitting happens it is going to split into two categories t2g and eg when unpaired electron is present here when unpaired electron is present here in the presence of light it is going to jump from one state to another state by absorption of the electron light in the visible region and this light can give you the uh, complementary color so that the compound if it has a unpaired electron in its configuration it is said to be color and if no unpaired electron it is said to be colorless so when the energy of the photon is equal to the difference between the lower higher d orbital transition so that that is what you call the dd transition if that comes in the range of the visible spectrum it is said to be color and also that is the complex titanium hexa aqua titanium 3 which is violet in color and titanium 3 plus is d1 in the metal d orbital in the t2g level in the ground state of the complex so similarly you can see the jump between t2g to eg orbitals in the visible region the electronic transition what do you call it as d d transition based on that we can just see a simple question that is which of the following is are correct yes there is this is a delta o means octahedral crystal field splitting energy delta t means this is a tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy like that questions can be given the relation between these two that's we know that it is tetrahedral crystal field splitting energy that we discussed in the previous slides that is 4 by 9 times of octahedral crystal field splitting energy dear students in today's class what we have seen is nothing but our crystal field splitting energy extension of the valence bond theory and based on crystal field splitting energy we discussed about how the crystal field splitting happens and tetrahedral crystal field splitting octahedral crystal field splitting and also spectrochemical series and we have seen the application of the crystal field splitting theory uh, magnetic nature and the colors and based on that in the ncrt based neat examination questions we are going to see in the next session with a lot more thank you very much please like and share and subscribe this session okay thank you very much thank you